one Microsoft Xbox system and the brand new power supply which cost me five of my UK pounds. Uh, so let's get into the repair as soon as I've figured out how to do that. Area. Always make sure you know how your tools work before getting uh, started. The first thing what we're going to do is you've got to take uh, the bottom screws out, they're just standard Torx T20 long screws, very long screws. Uh, there should be six of them in total. They're under the rubber feet, you'll have to peel those off. Uh, to reattach them, I think you just need some kind of uh, form of but glue that isn't that tough, you know, just some standard glue, not super glue or epoxy or anything that's basically super strong because that won't help. So there'll be one under this Microsoft Xbox video game system clip um, sticker, and another one under the uh, <coughs> serial number and MFR, uh, MFG date. You just want to peel them back slightly as to avoid destruction. Just want to make sure you peeled them off. Well, if you peeled them back far enough. That should be all six of the bottom screws taken off of the uh, bottom chassis of the Xbox. So let's put the system up right again, revealing the lovely green top. And uh, yeah, just lift the top cover off, just like that. And then we'll just shove it behind here because it's not important. Now we've got into the juicy innards. So next, I believe we remove the disk drive. And for this, I'm going to require this screwdriver, which I believe is. I think this is T7. If I'm not, if I remember right, no, it could be T8. I'm not sure. We'll have to test, experiment. I haven't taken this apart. In a while, yeah, this is T T8, T8 bit. Just undo the screw down there. Do another one down here. If I can even get to it. Damn, this is irritating. Okay, now got that. these two screws and uh, I think yeah we just gotta deroute just pull the ribbon cable out of this little plastic tab here uh, and then remove it from the back of the uh, disk drive I'm gonna unplug the power cable as well I think the uh, hard drive comes out first though not too sure let's also unplug the uh, Hard drive data cable, and if you do have a power supply already, and you will need to disconnect the power cable suppliers, it's a very difficult to remove component. There's another screw on top, which for mine, mine the uh, the tracks for it are slightly stripped, so it won't really sit in properly. So when I pull the hard drive out, you'll have it right here. Just a standard Seagate drive or Western Digital, depending on the model you have. Mine's a version 1.4, I think. Uh, I think mine's 1.4, I don't know. Just also yank the CD-ROM drive out. Everything should all just come out. Like so. Oh yes, we've got the lovely insides, which I saved from being permanently destroyed. And that's capacitor. There's a toothbrush. I had a toothbrush here. Oh, there we go. <coughs> just gonna unplug this controller harness and just uh, 
just go over them, just make sure nothing's corroded off. At the moment, nothing looks badly damaged, if I'm honest. Just a bunch of wet dust that's just adhered to everything. <laughs> I could repaste the heat sinks and all that, but I don't really want to risk destroying them for minus. We've got the Pentium 4, obviously. Uh, Pentium 4? This is 2001. Uh, yes, the Pentium 3M processor, just a tiny laptop CPU. And, uh, Nvidia something. I'm not an expert with Xboxes, but I do know how to fix them, so that's why you're all here. Um, well, first things first, I want to get rid of all the cables, so we just unplug the power lead and also disconnect the cable for uh, the data, so just get rid of that. Some debris in the, uh, debris on the power connector, which is a single row of connectors. If you have the other versions, they will have the double row pin of connectors, as was shown here. Mine's older. Mine says 1.4M. I think that's what that says. So, uh, fingers crossed this works. It should be compatible. If it's not, then I'm screwed. But, hey. Got to think of the positives in life. Right, um... Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the other controller harness. Ooh. Stand up for this, because it's... What I'm going to do is I'm going to lower it in and route the power connector through there. And then just lower that down so that it basically meets up with the screw points. I don't know if this goes in. Oh no, it doesn't. It, yeah, there's little lugs. So you've got to put it down and then slide it forward. Because there's little lugs. Uh, that's matched up with its screw points now. So we can install the power supply screws. There will be one up here by the main transformer, which has a security sticker on it for some reason. I don't know why, but hey, Microsoft, I don't like you taking stuff apart. Was that Apple? I don't know. Well, every company doesn't like you doing that. And then you've got another screw down the very bottom, at the very front of the computer. Well, it's not a computer, but we can technically class this one. It's got computer bits in it. Okay, plug the controller harness back in, no feed all the cables through, make sure nothing's shorting, because that would suck majorly. Then you want to plug the main power harness into the motherboard. I think it, it would also be wise to wrap, uh, push these cables down as well. Uh, make sure your harnesses are plugged in, because it would suck if you can't plug the controllers in. Uh, Then I think I'm gonna plug the mains in. I don't know. Oh no, I'm oh, gonna plug the controller. Oh, yeah. Okay, let me just look at that. That's gonna go. Okay, so we plug it in this side first. Let's check that. Got the power lead, which goes in. That all very sophisticated stuff. Samsung, proper Samsung uh, DVD drive, which is a shame. It's proprietary, so you can't really use this in a PC. But you could if you got a harness to convert this yellow connector to uh, uh, Molex or some other style, style of universal computer connector. The IDE is universal, and the hard drives can be reused. So if you've got a completely trashed Xbox, you can scrap these for the hard drives. Although you'll have most of the retro gaming fans saying, why would you break an Xbox to just get the hard drive? Because not all of us are into consoles. I myself, I do like my retro consoles, and that's why I'm fixing this one. Uh, so there's a little lug on the side of the hard drive caddy. You've got to feed the uh, wires through. This, just so you know, get them in there. And then 
you want to press in the power connector. Feed that. Yeah, you want to pull this down and feed the cable through as you're doing so. It's a difficult process with the with the helmet. Well, without the power supply, it's much easier. But with the power supply, you're going to make sure you've got it absolutely flush. Yeah, that's flush. Uh, then you just want to route these cables into this little uh, routing thingy that they've uh, they've given us. So that's quite thoughtful of them. I just like the fact that Xboxes are simple. They are, they're easy. Of course they've got Torx screws and stuff, but it's easier than other consoles I've seen. Uh, PS4 much. Uh, okay, so we have all of the power in. Or all of the connectors plugged in. So I guess now it's the main chance to see if it explodes when we plug it in. The power on. Um, switch on, so here we go. Will it explode? No, it hasn't. Okay, now we're going to press the power button. Okay, so it does still perform that flashing red light of death thing. We have fixed the electrical issues where it wouldn't turn on at all. So there is definitely an issue with the motherboard uh, somewhere. I will have to look into that further, but we have sort of fixed it to the point it actually turns on now. Uh, let's see if pressing the power button longer now. Oh, there we go! Look at that! It's booting right up with a flashing orange light. That just means that, that we haven't got an AV cable plugged in. I'm going to see how long it takes for it to red ring. Well, orange ring. You know what I mean. The drive is still working, it's not clicking, so if I do need to back the drive up... Ah, uh, yes, it's red ringed again. So I don't know what was causing that issue. Maybe the past the leakage on the board has substantially buggered the system, <laughs> but uh, we, we shall see, we shall see. Um, okay, well the good news is it does power on still, we haven't screwed it up in any substantial way, so I've just blown it up. Uh, but what I am going to do is I'm going to pull the system apart again, uh, marginally. And uh, we are going to... Install a special cable. So I've been meaning to install... Well, not cable, but there's a screw I forgot to install and I've just noticed I haven't installed it. all of the drives out again. No biggie there. Uh, where's the other screw? There it is. It's just a screw that attaches to the motherboard, nothing fancy. It's just ever so slightly corroded, so I removed that specific screw to try and mop it, mop it up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to unplug some other unnecessary stuff, just to see if anything else is causing boot issues. So we're taking all the controller harnesses out here. Let's see if we can fix it that way, because it'll be better to identify whether the harnesses are working or not. Okay, plug the mains back in, keep your fingers well away. Okay, there we go, we have no drive plugged in. But it is running upside down, you should try and avoid running hard drives upside down. Uh, try not to bash anything that either. So we have no controllers plugged in, we have none, none of the drives, and it does still red rings, this is still a motherboard issue. Uh, okay, so we haven't fixed the Xbox at all, but this will come back in another video maybe. Maybe it's overheating. Could be overheating, because the Nvidia chip is quite warm. CPU isn't. Maybe that's because it's got a fan attached to it and it's bigger. 
the GPU gets warm. Now this could this could actually be an overheating protection thing. This could be protecting itself from overheating. I of course don't have a TV with me, so I can't actually see what it's displaying on the screen. Last time it gave me error 08, so we don't know. Okay, let's unplug the power so I don't get electrocuted. Uh, okay, let's plug all the harnesses back in, let's plug everything back in. And uh, maybe I'll do a, some other form of research, because I haven't actually been able to clean the board. I've ripped the capacitor off, which is located at 07G1 or C7G9 or C7G10. For those who still have the cap installed on their systems, remove it immediately, because it will explode. Well, not explode it, but it will spew its guts all over the board and corrode everything. And uh, will slowly eat the Xbox alive to the point where it doesn't boot anymore, like mine does. So, I'll have to look around. Uh, Xbox power supply doesn't make taser noises anymore and doesn't have power distribution issues. So, I don't know. We will have to look around. But I'm still going to probably redo the thermal paste on this. figure out how you even take these brackets off because this is just like a switch isn't it? Yeah that's just a switch. This comes off easily. Easier than some. I'm gonna still leave those on. Yes, uh, so at the moment no we haven't fixed the Xbox which is but this wasn't really the focus of today's video. The focus of today's video was installing the power connector on the main board. That was what we were planning on doing. But, in a future video, we will do some more research and we shall sort this strange red flashing light of death issue. Because, not of many other people have had this failure. It seems to be only me that's suffering it. I haven't found any uh, records or any other people complaining about the same issue. So, where do I come in there? Nobody knows. So, for now, let's just put everything back in. Maybe I put that connector in wrong. Yeah, uh, yes, I have plugged it in the wrong way around. Uh, but like we said. I may not have actually physically fixed the boot issue, which isn't associated with the power supply. That's all. But what I have done is I fixed the no power whatsoever issue. And the taser. The taser sounding issue. It didn't actually shock me, but it sounded like it was going to, so... Uh, as a natural instinct, I, uh... Remove the old power supply and dispose of it. I don't know, that's not the correct way you're supposed to go around that in the repair industry. So uh, I vowed never to do that again. And if this power supply does break down in the future, then I know how to sort it. I've got a soldering iron, I've got components on tap. I will fix it. Again, just got um, our drive is sitting flat. Connect that in. Like that. That should be under there. We've got two. Oh, yes, we've got the two screws. The one that goes down here. down the other side. Uh, 
one is the big one, which goes underneath here. Top cover. Make sure you go the right way around, because if you don't, it's going to suck. switch back over to our T20 Torx screwdriver and we are going to uh, redo all of the case screws uh, as demonstrated uh, and to reattach the rubber feet on the bottom you'll just need a, a weak adhesive maybe PVA glue, just something weak and just splotch the feet back on. And then when you need them again, just peel them straight back off. Now for my system, I'm not gonna put the feet back on, at least until I've got the system to boot and stay on. Oh, I might have actually broken the screw man in there. Back your hidden screw and insert it. Strange, that means it don't want to go in. Yes it does, yes it does. Should be all the screws that we need. And uh yeah. That's the depressing side of unsuccessful uh, system repair. But like I said, this is not actually related. This is getting the electrical side of things sorted, which we have done. Uh, to get the red ring of death uh, to be sorted, I will need to do more research because I haven't actually toyed around with the Xbox before, and I don't really know its error codes all that much. But it's not green and orange flashing. I can demonstrate it. The camera can see that clearly. Power on. No. It would help if the system was on. Okay, yeah, you can see that's green and orange, so that just, I think, indicates the AV cable's not plugged in. And it's normal, fan's blowing, everything's doing what it should be doing. Like, I can even eject the drive if I want. Which it won't do because I think I've installed it incorrectly. Let's try again. Oh, yeah, and then it's doing that, which is solid orange flashing, no other colour and it shuts itself off. So I don't know what that means. But we have sorted the power issue. What could I do? Is there like a factory reset option? Not sure, I don't even have my uh, emergency paper clip thing. Either. Or do I? Can I have something I can poke in there? I've got this needle. Is that going there? 
to know it won't. I need something small. I need some nail. Nope. Some method of ejecting the drive. Not sure. Maybe a bit of solder or something. Might be a bit too weak, but we can try. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, uh, don't worry about that later. But for now, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> um, well, of course, that's what you guys are going to help me with. So, if you, if you know how to fix the uh, flashing light of death issue, post links or whatnot in the comments section down below. And, uh, yes, we, we will. We will fix this thing. This will come back in another video. We'll revisit this. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, what we're going to do is I have this here. This is a... Just a cheap standard Acer Aspire 1 from the Windows XP period, it's got its in Intel Atom, all that. And uh, what's happened to it is the screw mounts, have, well one of them's come off completely and I've lost it, and the other one is basically hanging on by a thread and it keeps breaking off. So I'm going to pause the video here, I'm going to come back with some sort of glue, and um, we will uh, fix that. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of this uh, Evo stick. I'm probably going to be getting a bunch of angry comments saying, No, oh, don't use that. Well, I haven't got much of a choice. So, shut up and take your complaints elsewhere. Uh, just get in there. Get in there. This is irritating. Come on. Can I just cut this? It smells horrible. Uh, I just, can I just blob that onto my finger? Just shove it in the hole. Shove in the hole. Oh, this is super messy. Oh, it's all over my fingers now. Ah. Ah. That's not worked at all. Okay, let's get our standoff. And just shove it in that hole. Just go in there. Ah. Oh. I can't get it off. I can't get it to come off. It's physically stuck to me now. Oh, this is this. This is just embarrassing. I was supposed to be fixing stuff, not gluing myself to surfaces. Uh, okay. Um, do I have like a pair of pliers? Something. Yes. Like I said, what I actually want to do with these pliers, I just want to sort out this piece here, this bent screw thing. It's buckled somehow. See if we can sort that out at least. As long as I have some kind of victory today, I don't care what it is. Yeah, that's better. Slide the hard drive back. There we go, that, that fits much, much nicer now. Do that, and then we just put this one screw that's holding the. everything else in. Oh shit. Oh, that's dripping everywhere. Oh, that's. Oh. Oh, what do I do with that? Do I just take it off like, like that? Okay, um, there we go, put that off, put the lid back on. Uh, okay, we're get, I think we're going to stop here. Uh, that's been episode four of Let's Fix It. Uh, this is a double repair, you know, we've got the Acer fixed-ish, and the Xbox sort of fixed. So this, I wouldn't really say, was a proper video. It wasn't too successful, but... We fixed the power issue, and the Xbox can now actually turn on. But and I also have covered my feet.
finger in this unknown gluey substance. Uh, but hey, we've got it fixed. So that was episode four. Hope you enjoyed, and leave your help tips with the Xbox down in the comments below. Um, yep, this is me. Uh, another video. Uh, more content coming soon. I will be getting a better camera for these videos. Uh, but yeah. Oh god, those fumes. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Alright, um, that's all for today, and I hope to talk to you soon. Okay, so welcome back. This is day two of the same repair on the Microsoft Xbox console. Um, now, in the previous video, which, well, the previous segment, because this will all be ended together in the future, uh, basically what we did was we replaced the power supply and it was still red ringing and amping the fans up at the end. Uh, now, I personally do not know what it, uh, if that was probably due to overheating, so what I did was I took the old thermal paste off, off camera because it was an absolute pain. That would have taken hours, if not even longer, to just get that, uh, that crap off. That was, that was horrible. And we're going to replace it because applying it is much easier. I'm just going to find the screw bits because I've strewn them everywhere. You know what this is. Nothing ever goes to plan with these videos. Nothing ever does. Uh, where's the T20? There we go. I'm going to use something big enough to drive it. Uh, I wonder if I can just do it by hand. No, I can't. Okay, uh, here's what I'm Let's just find something big enough. I think I had my uh, blown up drill somewhere. It's dead, but it can still just be used for the tool. Oh, you forget that, you know, I can't be bothered. We're just going to use some pliers. Oh, that, that's just going to scratch it up. Forget it, we're just gonna put off. Ugh. There we go. Hate using pliers. While we're at it, we might as well get the other screwdrivers ready. Because we'll obviously need those for the internal screws. I wonder if this fits. No, it's, a, uh, it's one size too big. That's in the way. Yeah, so we just gotta, again, take all the screws out of the bottom. Of course, I've taken this thing apart so many times. Uh, honestly, n none of the screws, all labels for that matter of fact, just stayed stuck down. Now. I'll also put the rubber feet back on afterwards, as soon as we can get the system to run longer than like 15 minutes. This is not a mod chipped Xbox, this is a stock Xbox. I just started doing that one day. First I blamed the clock capacitor, so I ripped that off and cleaned the board. I mean, the board looks okay, so I, I doubt that would be causing any issues. But I don't know, we shall see, we shall see. There we go. That should be all the screws, and I'll just flip the end over, take the hat off, and we're reviewed with the juicy innards of the Xbox, okay. for the 80 billionth time in a row. So yeah, we're just going to remove the ribbon cables on both sides. Now these ribbon cables aren't proprietary, they're just IDE. You'll have to be careful with the power cable for the CD-ROM drive, because that is proprietary. I should probably consider um, 
uploading the old clips to my phone for editing. I delete them off this computer because it's severe lack of space, but hey, I've got enough storage for maybe a good hour. So yes, you do get to watch me screw up for an hour. That's not working. No, that's stuck. Okay, we're gonna go one side up. Maybe T9 will be able to sort this out. Yeah, that does it. Just gotta take this top out the screw out, which doesn't technically matter because it's stripped anywho. It just sits there. heads are not actually turning. No, there we go. Obviously must have done them up too tight or some crap like that. That does tend to happen on this show. I tend, look, I try not to fail, but hey, it's for entertainment purposes. You get to see me fail to fix simple things and then have a rant about it in the comments. It's ideal to remove the power connector with the hard drive with the pliers because it's an absolute pain. One of those right angled connectors that everyone hates. So reveal that and just yank it up on it and just, yeah. If your cable's routed, you'll have to deroute the power lead from the hard drive. Um, right, that's unplugged, so you can just lift the DVD drive out of the way. Should be a DVD drive, although the DVD mode is only activated with a proprietary adapter sold separately. So well done, Microsoft. Microsoft is just Apple at the time. They just wanted you to buy extra just to use stupid things. Like, why would I need to use my Xbox as a DVD player? I probably already have a dedicated DVD player anyway. If I was rich enough to afford one at the time. Right, we're gonna s we're gonna stop here and. Uh, I'll take these heat sinks off off camera, so if I break them, then you, you don't have to watch me do that. But yes, we've got the thermal cases over here. Got some lovely Arctic Silver MX4, high quality stuff, highly recommend it. So yeah, that's uh... Oh, is that? Oh, that's, oh that must be because I've bedangled with it before, it's why it's looser. Okay, so I'll take these off and I'll get right back. Okay, so I've taken the heat sinks off. You can see that it's pretty much just built like a mobile PC inside, just checking it hasn't cracked the die. It's a CPU trying to take that off because that would have been catastrophic. I'm presuming the uh, cracking, crumbling noises is just the brackets being scratched. Hopefully, and we haven't crashed the dies or substrates inside. Uh, yeah, so what we've got is we have a Intel um, SL5SN. Uh, Pentium 3, I think, microprocessor, copper mine based, so this is basically yeah, a computer. I think you can run Windows with these if you hack them enough. Perfectly capable, but they're just very weak due to the lack of RAM. I think this only has about like, 5 12 megs of RAM. It's probably run Windows 98 very well, but it won't run XP at all. So here we go Arctic MX4. And what we do is, if I can get this on camera very well, because I'm very sorry. Uh, never usually get applying thermal paste properly on camera, but you can see it. Just apply a small blob. That should be enough, because you only need to cover the die, you don't need the whole chip. As for the GPU, we're going to do an X thing. So we're going to apply a little X of thermal paste on the top. And just get the rest of that crap off. Maybe a little more. Yeah, I think that's well spreaded. I'm going to put the cap back on. Over time, the thermal paste will harden and the cap will be held on, so you will have to end up removing it with pliers towards the end of the tube's life with stuff in it. And then you have to go on Amazon and buy another tube and spend more money. But hey, 
This is quality stuff. This lasts eight whole years. So this is this is good for the money. It's only like eight quid. Ain't cheap, but it's worth it. Give me that. People thinking eight quid is expensive. Please, you should see the blimmin' Georgette plush toy I've seen on eBay. It's blimmin' fifty quid plus postage and import tax. So what you can see there is the X of the thermal post. I don't know if you can see that quite well. The glare's quite bad, but yeah, at this angle you can see quite clearly the X. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to apply the heatsink for the Pentium 3 first, just like that. Just wiggle it around a little bit, just to get that nice and spread. Uh, Clip-wise, you want to make sure that you've faced the eject clip with this little bit here, facing forward to the front of the, compu of the computer console. Well, I don't even know what to call it. It's a computer and a console, but it's, it's a computer that plays console games. There we go. So, applying the clips is usually ten times easier than removing them. And there we go, you just move that little black lever down like a normal heatsink on AMD systems, I think. Uh, I think that's how that works, and boom. Your heatsink ain't going nowhere. That is not moving, that is solid. As for the uh, smaller NVIDIA heatsink, which hasn't got a fan on it at all, and I know by NVIDIA, at uh, Cough Cough uh, 2011 MacBook Pro, uh, Nvidia stuff loves to die, uh, so I th think you place this facing this way around. Uh, I'm not the best at this, just a warning, but I do believe that faces that way around. Oh hey look, we got it on first try, look at that. It's a little bit wonky, so we just want to you know, work it around, there we go. We have bent the fins as well, so we're just going to bend those back a little bit, nice and straight. Careful. Board is a little bit dirty, but I have gone over it with the acetone, and surprisingly, acetone works a little bit better. Uh, it hasn't even eaten the writing off of the off of anything, if I'm honest. It's cleaned stuff up quite well. So we've redone the thermal posts. So now, I think we can test the system in its bare bones state. So uh, yeah, let's get. Um, power cord. This is quite risky. Keep your fingers well away from the power supply on uh, this side of the board. It's quite obvious it's a different colour to the main board. Press the power button and uh, will the caps explode? Okay, so we've got orange and green. That's usually indicative to missing video. And if this thing is royally screwed, it will do the orange flash of death and die. It usually lasts this long anyway, so I'm not surprised. If it lasts any longer than this... Okay, yeah, it's still doing the thing. Uh, okay, so I think... I don't know what's wrong. If it's not overheating, which it shouldn't be... It really shouldn't be overheating. There is no way that this could be overheating. I've reapplied the thermal paste with high-quality paste. Hmm. Something is clearly... there's probably a trace on the board broken somewhere. Uh, where, I don't know. Uh, like I said, if anybody does know a fix that doesn't involve thermal paste to the red flashing light of... well, not really red, it's amber, and then shuts down and the fan spins up. I don't really know. If anyone does know a fix to that, uh, please link comments down below because uh, I, I don't want to be defeated but I have been defeated now 15 year old Xbox is the first fail of let's fix it that we haven't fixed and it kind of goes against the title because I try to make sure everything in these videos is permanently fixed of course trying to fix is copyrighted well I don't even think it's copyrighted but I don't want to use the same name because of course I'll get backlash so I've changed it to let's fix it, which comes at its own compromise because we haven't fixed it. It's still doing the thing. I don't know if voltages could be an issue, but yes, we will have to test voltages and whatnot. But I haven't got a multimeter here because I don't have one because I'm too poor. I had to borrow one and send it back. So I have no multimeter now. But yeah, 
You've already seen me put the Xbox back together in the previous segment, so I'm not going to bother doing it on camera, but... I'm going to see if we can plug it in and just... I don't know if it is the GPU overheating or something. Because nothing's getting hot, unless the temperature sensor is faulty in this unit. I don't really see what could be causing a problem, aside from a solder splash or a broken trace. But this isn't modified. This is an unmodded Xbox. And yet, it still does this. It's unmodded. Stock. Completely stock. And all of a sudden, it's died on me. Could be one of the diodes or resistors around where the capacitor leaked. I mean, it very well could be. But I don't know. This is the thing. If anyone does know how to fix the original Xbox, the uh, flashing orange light of death, uh, your comment will be featured in a follow-up video when I do sort this flipping thing out. So until then, this has been Let's Fix It, episode 4, I believe now, we're on a roll. Uh, sadly, due to the lack of monetary currency, I can't really buy any new parts and for anything. So it may be delayed until I find something that just needs a quick reflow or something like that. Or just needs a cap off a donor board or just something like that. But until then, pretty much stuff. Well, thank you for watching, and uh, have a good rest of your day, even if I'm not.